everybody, thank you so, so much for tuning in. Today's video, I have a compilation of some of my favorite older boho videos. I've been doing YouTube since 2016 and I have a much bigger audience now. So a lot of my videos, not a lot of people got to see. So I put a compilation together of all of my older videos. That's not including the last three ones that I created recently. Those will just link in the end. And I really, really hope that you enjoy these crafts and you stick around by subscribing to this channel because once you subscribe, we instantly become best friends. Did we just become best friends? Yep. And please hit that notification bell. YouTube may or may not let you know when I post a video, but if they don't, follow me on Instagram. I always post what I'm up to. And if you're up to it, I just started a personal channel, Jay Does It All. I'll link that below as well. I just did a Q&A on there with a bunch of questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. And let's go ahead and get started. For this first one, I'm using two bundles of this Dollar Tree rope. It's 40 feet, so I'm gonna have a ton left over for what I'm making. And I'm just going to start hot gluing it together until it looks like a placemat. Now I'm making this large enough so it fits on a Dollar Tree pizza pan, and once it's large enough, I'm just gonna secure it in place with some hot glue, and then cut down the extra rope. I have a ton of rope left over, and then I'm just going to get some handles and rip a little piece of where I had coiled the rope and secure my handles in with some E6000 and hot glue so that it holds instantly. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and let it dry really well. Once it's completely dry, you have a really affordable and unique tray. For this next one, I'm using these two puzzle pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm using them for the wood, so if you just have scrap wood, use that and save yourself the $2. But if not, then go ahead and use this, and what you're going to do is you're going to glue the two pieces together to where the puzzle sides are facing each other, and you're just left with the wood. Make sure both sides are aligned and then clamp them together to let them dry. You can use whatever you have, just add some weight on top. Once it's dry, remove that and now you can paint it or stain it however you want. You can use watered down brown paint if you don't want to use actual stain or you can just paint it one solid color. Make sure that it dries really well before moving on. Now that it's dry, I'm gonna use this Waverly stencil. It was probably about $3, maybe even cheaper. And I'm gonna take a gold pen and just fill in where the stencil goes. You can use regular paint. Dollar Tree does carry metallic pens now, but this one is a brand that I got at Walmart. I'm gonna remove it and now I'm gonna work on the feet, but of course you can use it as is. I got these at Dollar Tree, these are little bubbles. I'm just gonna cut off that top side where the top screws on and then I'm gonna spray paint them with Rust-Oleum's metallic gold. Once that's completely dry, I'm just gonna secure that into the four corners using the glue of my choice. Usually it's E6000 in this tutorial. I ended up using the Dollar Tree kind. So I'm gonna let it dry completely. And when I'm done, I have another really cool tray. For this next one, I'm gonna use the Tumbling Tower games from Dollar Tree, also my square tool. Wood glue, I usually prefer Gorilla Wood Glue, and these little drawers from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna measure these out to see how many Jenga pieces I'm gonna need to create a little base for it. And once I start to line those up, I realize that one is a little long, so I'm just gonna make my mark and I cut it down. Now I will link the mini saw, but you can of course use a hand saw or you can leave it long and then just space out the drawers and add something in between. So I'm figuring out how many I need and I'm gonna create five rows of five Jenga. And I am adding my shorter pieces in there. Now I'm going to make two of these, so 10 rows of five Jenga, and now I'm gonna make the top and the bottom, which is five rows of three Jenga, and I'm gonna make two of those. Now I'm gonna assemble it together, but before I do that, I'm gonna sand it down so that it accepts the stain a little bit better. For some reason, Gorilla Wood Glue, it just looks a little funky if you don't sand it down. 
And of course, you can skip staining and just use a solid color. But now I'm going to assemble and pay really close attention on how I'm positioning everything. Now that I've made my little box, I'm gonna go ahead and stain it or paint it. And once that is completely dry, I added little feet. I'll leave these below, but you can also use chest feet from Dollar Tree, which is what I use in my enamel tub video. And once you are done, just add your little drawers and bam, you have a beautiful, unique little drawer set. For this next one, I'm using the smaller wood puzzles from Dollar Tree, and I'm just using this for the back side. I'm going to go ahead and stain it, uh, but again, you can use watered-down brown paint or solid color. And then after it is stained, I'm going to take one of the Dollar Tree little figurines. This is a giraffe. I'm going to spray paint it with metallic... Uh, gold from Rust-Oleum and hot glue it in place. This is probably the easiest tutorial. I'm going to line the edges with some of the Dollar Tree lace and tuck in the bottom. And then when I'm done, I have a really, really cool jewelry holder. For this next one, I'm going to use these canvases from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to remove the back using an upholstery staple remover i'm gonna go ahead and remove it but of course you can skip this and actually just cut around it if you're not planning on saving the actual stretched canvas part so i'm actually going to use this in this tutorial and i'm going to paint this the first color is goldenrod which i got at target the second color is ballet pink and that is a waverly paint from walmart and the third color is pool and that is another Waverly paint. These walk decals are from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna go ahead and stick them on. You can of course hand paint whatever you want, but the decals were absolutely perfect. I'm gonna cut off the edges and then I am going to glue my wood frame on top of this. So I created a little reverse canvas. You can hang these up using command strips or just adding string to the back of the painting and securing it into the wood. For this next one, I'm using two different hula hoop sizes from Dollar Tree, and I'm spray painting it with that same Rust-Oleum metallic gold that I've used for all the other tutorials. Make sure that you cover both front and back because you will be able to see the color once this is on a wall. So now I was able to find this at Dollar Tree. It's t-shirt yarn and that fluffy yarn, I'm not sure what it's called, sachet, whatever it is. I'm gonna cut strips in half in even sides and then I'm going to just loop it to where both of the hula hoops are secured in place. I spread them out and then I'm creating a little knot so that they're tied to the bottom. And once I have that, I'm gonna take my t-shirt yarn and I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna fill all of those gaps. I have a ton of yarn left over, so if I want to make another one, I totally can. And now with some scissors, I'm just cutting this down into a V-shape so it's nice and neat. And this is what I'm left with.
For this next one, you can either use some cotton twine from Dollar Tree or you can get crochet thread from Walmart or whatever fabric store. This is what they look like with each type of thread, so it depends on what look you're going for. To create the tassel, I'm going to use a mason jar lid and I'm going to drape one piece of the thread around there and then around that piece I'm going to wrap a thick amount. Then I'm going to tie the top and slip it off of the mason jar lid, cut the bottom, then wrap some more of my thread around or twine, whatever you want to call this, and tie that into a knot. Then I'm going to cut that down and straighten off the bottom. So I'm going to make a ton of these and for this tutorial I ended up using these embroidery hoops but Dollar Tree now has 3D wreaths in different sizes which you can use or if you want to make a really really big project you can make it using hula hoops. I just tied it around and then secured it in place using a little bit of hot glue. It's up to you if you just want to tie it and leave it as is. To attach the pieces together, I'm going to grab my cotton twine and cut them into even pieces and then I'm going to start attaching the bottom to the middle and the middle to the top. I used one of these planters from Dollar Tree. I just removed the top. They now sell that on its own and I spray painted it a rose gold from Rust-Oleum. So this is what it looks like. I'm just going to hook it into place and it's up to you if you want to add some twinkle lights to this or if you want to add a lamp kit and just have the bulb hang totally up No to matter you. what you choose, when you're done you have a really really cool anthropology dupe. For this next one, and I've recreated it a few times on my channel recently, I'm just going to tint these jars using some Mod Podge and food coloring. And I'm going to print out a little henna pattern. So I'm going to relax the paper by spraying it lightly with water in the back and then placing that on the inside of my jar. So now I'm going to take a gold puff paint pen and I will link it below, but this type of Martha Stewart one is no longer sold with the tip, so I'll link both the Martha Stewart one and the regular one. Start from left to right if you're a righty, and right to left if you're a lefty so that you don't smudge your design. And if a design is too small, then just replace it with polka dots or freehand, it's up to you. And if there's an area that you don't like, you can always wipe it down or wait till it dries and scrape it off. I also did some freehand ones, it is totally possible, and these are jars from Dollar Tree that are already tinted, the red and the blue, so if you don't want to tint, you can skip the next step. For the next step, I'm going to grab some Mod Podge and food coloring and water it down just a bit. I want this to be runny enough to where it coats the inside comfortably, but not too runny because I don't want a bunch of air bubbles. So once I have that in, I'm going to pour it into my jar. And like I said, if you've seen my recent tutorials, you know that I've recreated this using wee jars and using a vase. So you can do this to anything that's glass. You're going to let this drip out and dry extremely well. And once it's nice and dry, you're going to put it face up. Bake it at 200 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes or until it's dry. And you want to make sure that it's face up and that you're cooling inside of the oven. One, so it doesn't crack. And you don't want it face down because since there's no air on the inside, all of the Mod Podge is just going to clump to the bottom. And this is what you're left with. For this next one, I'm using two of the elephant figurines from Dollar Tree and I'm going to try and cut them down as even as possible. So I'm going to make my mark and then with a knife, I'm just going to cut it down. It's easier to use a hot knife, but a regular knife just works. So now that you have the inside, I'm going to take some wooden pieces. Dollar Tree now sells wooden pieces. These are from Walmart and I'm going to secure that in place using E6000. I am adding a really generous amount.
By the way, if you're on a really tight budget, you can always buy a really, really cheap curtain rod. This was like $2 at Walmart, and you can replace the end with a sparkly button. Now I made these to be renter friendly, so I'm using some heavy duty command strips and I'm placing them together and then adding two to the back. Now I'm going to take some scissors and cut down the extra amount and then I'm going to mount them on to my wall. For this one, you're going to need four of these rugs or more if you want this longer and you're just going to position them to where they all line up nicely. I ironed mine out by putting a pillowcase on top and just using very low heat and you can sew this but I ended up using hot glue and just pushing it together making sure that I'm not creating any bulk and once it is nice and secure, it's time to move on. So I used a stencil from Walmart. They're not very expensive. They're anywhere from two to $5. And I did put some adhesive on it just so it sticks a little better, but of course you can hold it down using painter's tape. With some multi-surface paint and one of these little brushes from Dollar Tree, I'm just gonna start blotting on the color. Make sure that you're going in an up and down motion and not side to side and peel it off when it's dry, not like what I did here. I added my stencil to other pieces on the rug and now with some Dollar Tree cotton twine, I created some tassels and I'm just gonna flip over my rug and start gluing those tassels into place. But of course you can sew, you don't have to glue. This is what I did back then. So I'm going to evenly space them and cut down the excess. I found these non-slip rug underlays from Dollar Tree. I'm going to secure them in place with adhesive, but of course you can sew them in place and just cut down the excess. It is up to you if you even want to add this. A lot of people have asked me if this has held up, and it has. I usually just wash in cold water and air dry. So now I'm just going to finish it off by adding some of the lace ribbon from Dollar Tree. And like I said, and I've continued to say, I hot glued, but you can of course just sew it into place. So now I'm gonna secure the ends and continue all the way around and I'm done. So that's it. I really hope that you enjoyed those crafts. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite, which one you'll be recreating, and don't forget to check out my new boho videos and also my personal channel. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will hopefully see you on the next one.